Hello, Mark Lingwood from St. Mary's College of California again, here to talk to you about emission spectroscopy. Let's get started. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the emission spectra of gases. And in order to do that, we need a gas in a tube. And so here we have hydrogen contained in this tube here, which is inside this plastic bit. And then we need to apply a high electrical voltage to the gas. And in order to do that, there's electrodes on either side here. And we're gonna put it into this device where through the electrodes, we're going to apply a high voltage. So give me a second to get this loaded in here. Okay, and then I'll turn the device on and then cut the ambient light. And there you have it. This is the emission of hydrogen. And so you can observe the color that you see. Now I can rotate this and we can see the emission spectra of helium. which gives us a different color, and you can record this color. And then I can rotate it again, and I can see the emission spectra of neon, which gives us yet again another color. Now, these colors really don't tell us the whole story, so we have to look a little deeper if we're going to find out what's going on here. So we'll start investigating these emission lamps further by using this simple setup I made here. So it's a piece of cardstock with a tiny little slit in it that you can barely see right there. And I put it on a Lego base plate because it makes a pretty good optical table. And we're gonna use a lens, a double convex lens, and a diffraction grating, which is basically like a prism except cheaper. And so I have a lens that's in a little Lego holder that I made that I'll put onto here. And I'll put the diffraction grating on like that. Now, I would want to test this first with an incandescent light to show you what it looks like, but I don't actually have one convenient. So what I'll do is I'll use the LED on my phone instead, which gets us pretty close to a continuous spectrum which means that it puts out almost all the wavelengths at the same time, as opposed to what we'll see with the emission lamps. So let me angle this around and turn off the lights. So here we are with the lights off, and I took the diffraction grating off so I could show you what it looks like without it. So I'll line up my light source, and you can see that it goes through the lens and hits this piece of paper I have behind it, which goes in and out of focus as I move the piece of paper. Okay, so let's put the diffraction grating in. Okay, so now you can see that center spot where the light is going through the lens, but then you also see kind of a rainbow on the side. And that rainbow is the light being split into its constituent wavelengths. It looks like most of a rainbow. Again, it's not perfect because the LED is not a true white light source. But, okay, so that's what the diffraction grating does, and the lens and the slit. So now let's try it with the emission lamps and see how that goes. Okay, here we are with the hydrogen emission lamp again, and I have the piece of cardstock sitting here and the diffraction grating in the lens. So now if I line the emission lamp up and use the piece of paper again, again, you can see that center a line which is the light that makes it straight through the lens and then you can you can't see it probably now on the video but there are a couple very faint lines next to that and so I'll take a picture and show it to you now and then a similar thing happens when we rotate from the hydrogen to the helium lamp we can show that you may be able to see it on the video. If not, I'll take a picture and put it up now. All right, and then I'll switch to the neon lamp and you can see what that looks like. Okay. So to take this to the next level, we're gonna use something called an emissions spectrometer. And so inside this box is essentially the same things I just had on the Legos. There's a diffraction grating to spread the light into its constituent wavelengths. There's an array of detectors that functions like the piece of paper. 
based on where the light is placed by the diffraction grating, it measures it at a certain wavelength value. And so we can take the little fiber optic on the front and we can aim it at our light coming out. Here I'm back to the hydrogen lamp. So in the software we can see different peaks at different wavelengths that correspond to those bands of light we saw on the piece of paper. And it moves around as I kind of move the fiber optic cable. Because the different emission lines have different intensities, depending on how close I get the fiber optic cable to the light itself, they kind of come up and down. And so I'm going to find a good compromise here where we have one of the lines going off the screen and then the other line such that we can see, and then I'll stop it. Now I can move my fiber optic cable. And then in this software, I can move the cursor around to see what wavelengths each peak is at. And so this peak here is at 432 nanometers, 484 nanometers. Well, it's kind of hard to tell because it goes off scale, but it seems like it's at about 655 nanometers, 776 and a half nanometers, 844 nanometers. Great. Now I can do this again with a different emission lamp. So I'll do it again with the helium and you can get a sense of what that spectrum looks like. Now there's a lot more lines in the helium spectrum, so it gets a little more complicated. And so if you'd like, you can pause the video here and read the spectrum off. And then for the neon lamp, here's what it looks like. Holy bonkers, that's a bunch of lines. And this makes sense now why we had kind of a mess when we looked at it in the, uh, on the piece of paper through the diffraction grating. Because there's a bunch of lines and they're all kind of spaced close together. And now you can do this with a number of other gases. If you're curious, I always like to show what my phone flashlight looks like in this thing. Because it's a mostly continuous light source, it's not perfect. If it was perfect, this would be flat. It wouldn't have peaks on it. And if you were to point this at the sun, you would see that. You'd see a pretty level spectrum as you go across all the wavelengths. But my phone flashlight is not the sun. It gets pretty close though. And then just for kicks, here's the blue LED that you'll use later in this lab. Let me try to get a good reading on it. And it has a single peak around its central wavelength. It's kind of broad, but it's also narrower than my phone flashlight. So it works as a kind of quasi-selective light source. And it actually does pretty well for the colorimetry that we're trying to do. And that's about it. Thanks for watching. Till next time.